Hello guys. This is the second part of the lecture on Paradise Lost, book 9. We have already talked about Satan's soliloquy in Eden. He praises earth and shows the conflict in his mind, the torment in his mind regarding God and his expulsion from heaven. And then searches for a serpent and enters the body of the serpent. After this, at dawn, Adam and Eve did their usual prayers and got ready for their day's labor in the garden. Their work every day is to tend the plants. And this day, Eve has a new plan. Eve spoke to Adam. The garden had grown big and there was much work to do. They couldn't rest. So Eve thinks that they should work separately so that they might get more work done. When together, their time was wasted gazing at each other and talking. Adam replied to Eve. Adam praises Eve's keenness in work. That is why she wants to, she wants to work more. That is why she wants to work separately. And he says her encouragement of Adam to do good acts is commendable. She always encourages Adam to do good acts. He allowed her a short period of solitude. But feared that Satan will take advantage of them. Remember in book 8, book 5, 6, 7, 8, Raphael had warned Adam against Satan. So he fears that Satan will take advantage of them if they are alone. So he asks her not to leave his side. Eve should not leave Adam's side. That is what Adam thinks. Eve already knew about Satan's threat and said she did not expect Adam to think that she will be tempted. How can you believe that I will be tempted? That is what she asked Adam. She was certain that they would be able to thwart Satan's fraud. She was certain that she will be able to uh, overcome the temptation. Adam said he doesn't doubt Eve's strength. Adam doesn't doubt Eve's strength, but wanted to avoid the enemy's attempt itself, for such an attempt would bring dishonor on them. He wanted to avoid the enemy's attempt itself because such an attempt would bring dishonor on both of them. Even the attempt should be avoided. This is like how parents would uh, reason with their children, especially girl children when they want to go out at night, etc. The children might ask, the daughters might ask, don't you know that I will be able to resist uh, if anybody causes trouble? I will be able to stand up for myself. And then the parents will say, yeah, we trust you, but we know you, will, you are strong enough, but why should you give somebody an opportunity at all? Like that, uh, Adam says, he doesn't doubt Eve's strength, but he thinks they should avoid the very attempt because the attempt would bring dishonor on them. And he says, when they are together, when Adam and Eve are together, Adam himself became wiser and more watchful and stronger. It is good when they are together because then Adam himself becomes, becomes wiser, more watchful and stronger. Eve argued that the enemy's attempt would only dishonor him for he would fail. Eve is arguing that the enemy's attempt would only dishonor him. Because anyway, the enemy is going to fail. Adam and Eve will be strong. Thus, Adam and Eve would get even greater favor from God. God would love them even more. Faith, love and virtue should be tested. The maker did not make them weak that they cannot protect their happiness. They are strong enough to protect their happiness. And when love, faith and virtue are tested, it only becomes stronger. These are Eve's arguments. So it is very dramatic. It is like a, 
drama that is happening now and remember paradise lost was originally intended to be a play called adam unparadised and there is syllogism here reasoning uh, argument logic now adam replies no creation is imperfect every creation is good perfect least of all man man is also perfect but adam says the danger to man is not from satan not from outside the danger to man is from within i am reminded of heathcliff and catherine in their last meeting heathcliff tells catherine catherine nothing could have separated you from me no external force could have separated you from me you yourself did it you separated yourself from me like that nothing can actually cause danger to man but man himself can be danger to man the danger to man is from within for he cannot come to any harm except through his own free will this is a very important thing in christianity this free will that man has to use though they are both loyal to god reason might sometimes deceive them so it is best to avoid temptation however by exercising her free will if she still desired to go eve could go and do her part that is something probably adam shouldn't have said adam adam says but still if you want to go you are free to go and do your part he will not stop her so eve went off with adam's permission in a miltonic simile milton describes at length her goddess like appearance adam followed her with her eyes desiring that she had stayed but trusted that she would return early as she promised the poet now tells us that hapless eve had fallen into deception for her enemy now the narrator is intervening and telling us that unfortunate eve had fallen into deception for her enemy waited in the shade to attack her the enemy is waiting in the shade to attack her meanwhile the serpent searched for the couple everywhere to make them his prey the serpent uh, or satan in the guise of the serpent is searching everywhere to make them his prey and then he found eve alone as he had hoped to look at the lines for now and since first break of dawn the fiend mere serpent in appearance forth was come now the satan now the fiend or satan a mere serpent in appearance but inside satan from the first bre- break of dawn he had come and on his quest where likeliest he might find the only two of mankind he was searching for the only two of mankind wherever he might find them he was searching for them but in them the whole included race when he is going to tempt them when he is going to destroy them he is actually destroying the whole of mankind the whole of the race his purpose to pray you and i are also his prey all of us humanity is a prey of satan in bower and field he sought everywhere in the bower and field he sought for the um, two people the two humans where any tuft of grove or garden plot more pleasant lay their tendons or plantation for delight wherever there was some plot of land that needed tending or wherever they had planted some trees and uh um, f- fruits and uh, plants for their own pleasure or in all those places by fountain or by shady rivulet the serpent searched for man and then i'm leaving some lines here and then satan's corruption is revealed satan's thoughts are revealed thoughts whither have ye let me he is appreciating the a beauty of eden and then he is asking his own thoughts thoughts whither have ye led me where have you taken me with what sweet compulsion thus transported to forget what hither brought us what what brought him here 
he should not forget. Satan is telling his own thoughts that they should not forget what has brought them here. Hate, not love. Don't fall in love with Eden. It is hate that has brought Satan here. It is not love, nor hope of paradise for hell. It is not the hope that hell will, will turn into a paradise. It is not love of any kind that has brought him here. Hope here to taste of pleasure. It is not the hope that he will be able to taste pleasure in Eden. That is not what has brought Satan to Eden. But all pleasure to destroy. Why he has come here is to destroy all pleasure. That is his aim. He should not forget his aim. Save what is in destroying other joy to me is lost. I do not have any other joy but the joy of destroying everything. It is the joy of destroying Eden that he wants. He does not need any other joy. Other joy to me is lost. This corrupt Satan is now saying, Then let me not let pass occasion, which now smiles. Now opportunity is smiling on me. Let me not let pass any occasions, which now smiles. Behold alone the woman, opportune to all attempts. That woman is standing there, the easy prey to all my evil attempts. Behold her, do not let that moment pass. Her husband, for I view far round, not nigh. He is very far, he is not near. Nigh means near. Her husband is very far, not near. Whose higher intellectual more I shun. Uh oh, Mil Satan seems to be a sexist. Satan is saying, Man or Adam has more intellect and I am afraid of it. But woman has less intellect. I am not afraid of her. Whose higher intellectual more I shun. And strength of courage haughty and of limb heroic built. Oh, oh, oh. He is describing Adam. Adam has strength. He has haughty courage. He has heroic body or limb. Though of terrestrial mold, even though he is made of earth, mere earth, even though he is merely of terrestrial mold, foe not informidable. He is not an informidable foe. He is a formidable foe. I am scared of Adam. Because I am not exempt from wound. Exempt from wound I not. Because of the fall from hell, heaven to hell, Satan realizes that he is not exempted from wound. He might be injured. He can be injured. So much hath hell debased and pain enfeebled me. Hell has made me so weak. Pain has made me so feeble to what I was in heaven. When I was in heaven, I was informidable. Nobody could defeat me. But now I have been cast from heaven and... I am weak now. I have to be scared even of that earthly being, Adam. She fair. Divinely fair. She is beautiful. Divinely beautiful. Fit love for gods, not for this man. She is fit love for gods. She is so beautiful. Not terrible. I am not scared of her. I am not afraid of her. She is not terrible, though terror be in love and beauty. However, there is some terror in love and beauty. In that sense, she is terrible. But she doesn't scare me like Adam scares me. Not approached by stronger hate. Hate stronger under shoe of love well feigned. Not approached by stronger hate means there is something fearsome in love and beauty that cannot be approached by stronger hate. Mine is hate and it is stronger than her uh, beauty and love but there is something terrifying in beauty and love that cannot be approached by hate so I have to hate stronger and show love I have to pretend love I have to feign pretend love make a show of love the way to which her ruin now I tend I will ruin her I will destroy her I will hate stronger, pretend to love her and ruin her, destroy her. So spake the enemy of mankind.
enclosed in serpent. This is the enemy of mankind, enclosed in the body of a serpent, inmate bad. He's a very bad inhabitant in the serpent's body. He's a bad inmate in the serpent's body. And toward Eve, addressed his way. He began to move his way. Addressed his way, I mean directed his path towards Eve. He began to move towards Eve. Not with indented wave, prone on the ground. As since, since the time God had cursed the serpent, serpent has been crawling in a wavy manner on the ground. But now the serpent is not moving on the ground in an indented wavy manner. But on his rear, he is rising on the coils. But on his rear, rising on the coils, circular bays of rising folds. His folds are rising on a circular base and from there he's rising head high that toward fold above fold a surging maze. The rising coils of the huge serpent is a maze, a surging maze. Maze is an important symbol in Paradise Lost. Maze is a symbol in Paradise Lost and the serpent is a maze. His head crested aloft he has spread its hood his head is crested aloft and carbuncle his eyes his eyes are red bright precious stones his eyes are like red precious stones with burnished neck of verdant gold erect golden neck erect amidst his circling spires like a phallic symbol the serpent is rising and tempting eve that on the grass his spires his folds that maze the coils of the serpent on the grass floated redundant over and over and over each coil redundantly they floated pleasing was his shape what a majestic appearance pleasing was his shape there he stood majestically in front of eve and lovely ever since of serpent kind lovelier now he's going into a an epic simile he's praising the serpent and describing the serpent using all the serpents from mythology and lovely never since of serpent kind lovelier there was no serpent ever in even in mythology that was lovelier than the serpent. Not those that in Illyria changed Hermione and Cadmus. I have to look up the notes because they are all references from mythology. Uh, not those that in Illyria changed Hermione and Cadmus. In Illyria, Hermione and Cadmus were changed into serpents. For the sin of killing a serpent. So Hermione and Cadmus turned into serpents. But those serpents were not as lovely as this one. Or the god in Epidaurus. Epidaurus or Asclepius is the god of medicine. Changed into a serpent. The god of medicine Epidaurus or Asclepius had also changed into a serpent. But that serpent is not as beautiful as this one. Nor to which transformed Ammonian Jove, another mythological god from Egyptian mythology. Ammonian Jove or the Egyptian god Ammonian Jove also transformed into serpent. Not as beautiful as this one. Or Capitoline Jove. Capitoline also is a Jove who was worshipped on the Capitoline hill in Rome. Or Capitoline was seen. Even the Capitoline Jove was not as beautiful as this one. He with Olympias and this with her who bore Scipio, the height of Rome. He with Olympias, that means Ammonian Jove mated with Olympias. Capitoline Jove mated with another serpent and bore Scipio, the great Roman. Height means the greatest of Romes. So, the Ammonian Jove is a god, Egyptian god. He mated with Olympias. That, those are serpents in mythology. Capitoline Jove mated with another serpent and bore, she bore uh, Scipio of Rome. 
remember cicero's dream of scipio in chaucer uh, he dre uh, reads dream of scipio remember so like that like all these mythological serpents more than that our serpent is beautiful with tract oblique at first at first he moved sideways with tract oblique as one who sought access but feared to interrupt suppose you are standing in front of a prin your principal or some minister or somebody and you want to talk to him or her but you are afraid to approach and interrupt so sideways you will move and in you know th 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 through some uh, sounds or some you know sly gestures you will try to attract their attention like that the serpent is standing on slyly trying to attract eve's attention with tract oblique at first as one who sought access but feared to interrupt side long he works his way not straight forward but side long as when a ship by skillful steersman wrought again continuing with the epi epic simile as when a ship by skillful steersman wrought nigh rivers mouth or for land as a ship moves sideways when it is managed by a skillful steersman near the river's mouth or in the foreland or in the uh, promontory promontory that is foreland where the wind veers loft as oft so steers and shifts her sail it is the description of the uh, you know uh, the ship in the wind so varied he like that satan also varied the serpent also varied of his tortuous train curled many a wanton wreath in sight of we eve in the sight of eve to attract her attention he weaved many 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 wreaths to lure her eye but she did not pay attention at first she besieged heard the sound of rustling leaves she heard the sound of rustling leaves but minded not as used to such disport before her through the field she has seen such playful uh, happenings many times in the field she did not pay attention from every beast she has seen this more duty as at her call than at circe and call the herd disguised all these beasts who play in the field are very dutiful to eve's call they come running to her obediently more obediently than the herd came to circe and call when circe in odyssey uh, while uh, odysseus was traveling back home he goes meets circe and circe with her look turned people into stone or swine i think both are said in mythology and the swine will not come to her when she calls them the swine the herd of swine or the pigs will not come to her when she calls them more attentive than the herd of swine coming at circe and call did these bees come on the call of eve the serpent is bold now he bolder now uncalled before her stood without her calling him he stood before her but as in gaze admiring as if he is admiring in gaze oft he bowed his turret chest his turret chest he bowed very often turret means tower like hood his tower like hood he bowed and sleek enameled neck fawning fawning means cringing like a slave his sleek enameled neck fawning and licked the ground whereon she trod in a very servile manner the serpent licked the ground where she trod his gentle dumb expression turned at length the eye of eve to mark his play he was so uh, acting so gentle and dumb finally eve marked his play he glad of her attention gained he is suddenly very glad that she has attended to him he that he got her attention with serpent tongue organic with natural serpent tongue or impulse of vocal air these are two interpretations uh, by critics regarding how the serpent spoke to eve whether he spoke with the natural tongue of the serpent or he made some um, you know something he did to the air 
and made the air vocal like you do with whistling whether he spoke like that has been contended so with serpent tongue organic or impulse of vocal air his fraudulent temptation thus began the serpent is now beginning his temptation first he praises her first the serpent is praising eve wonder not sovereign mistress sovereign mistress of the universe wonder not if perhaps thou canst who art soul wonder you are not only you, sorry you are not only the sovereign mistress of the universe you are the wonder of the universe you are yourself the wonder of the universe such a person as you should not wonder much less arm thy looks don't look so cruelly at me so angrily at me don't arm your looks the heaven of mildness he is calling her the heaven of mildness much less arm your looks with disdain don't arm your looks with disdain displeased that i approach thee thus don't be so displeased that i approach thee thus and gaze insatiate without satiation without uh, stopping i mean without getting fed up i am looking at you for such a long time don't be angry with me for that i thus single nor have feared thy fe awful brow your fearful appearance your awe inspiring appearance i am the only animal who doesn't fear everybody else fears you you are so awe inspiring i am the only animal who doesn't fear thy awful brow more awful thus retired and when you're alone like this away from adam you are even more awful when you are in retirement fairest resemblance of thy maker fair you are the fairest resemblance of thy maker you are the most beautiful resemblance of thy maker of the creator the all things living gaze on all things living gaze on thee look upon thee all things thine by gift all the things in this universe in this eden are yours by gift and thy celestial beauty adore with ravishment beheld all the things in the universe look up on your divine beauty with ravishment beheld their best beheld were universally admired such a beauty as you is best admired where everybody can see you you should be placed where where you can be universally admired you should not be in a place like this you should be in a place where the entire universe can admire you but here in this enclosure wild in this wild enclosure you are here where nobody can see you but these bees these bees among beholders rude they are the rude beholders that you have here only these rude beholders you have here and shallow to discern half what in thee is fair these bees are very shallow they do not understand how to look upon your beauty they do not even understand half of your beauty one man except who sees thee except one man adam who sees thee there is only one man here to look upon you you should be actually placed where the entire universe can see you but only one man is there to see you and what is one what is there in one person seeing you when one man seeing you it is no good you should be admired by the entire universe who shouldest be seen a goddess among gods adored and served by angels numberless thy daily train you should be like a goddess you should be adored and served by angels numberless angels they should be your daily train satan is thus praising eve first he praises eve that is the first temptation secondly he pretends to be her friend that is the second temptation eve is not tempted in either way thirdly he uses reason that is when eve is tempted so this is the first temptation satan seduces eve and later eve will seduce adam 
there are three stages in the temptation first he praises eve's beauty and secondly he poses as her friend in both these cases eve doesn't get tempted thirdly he uses reason it is when eve uses reason sorry satan uses reason that he is tempted and later eve also tempts adam using reason now the serpent moved sideways approached eve and praised her beauty grace and godliness the beauty of the serpent is described in a famous miltonic simile the beauty of the serpent eve was flattered and surprised to see such a creature speak the serpent describes how he gained the gift of speech and intellect by eating the fruit of one of the trees in the garden he is casually saying oh i gained this power of speech and this intellect by eating one of the trees in the garden he also says that eating the apple has also made him worship her beauty he calls her the sovereign of all creatures universal dame etc at this time eve is curious to know which fruit it is that he ate and the serpent brought her to the tree of prohibition or the tree of knowledge or the forbidden tree again there is an epic simile describing it eve told the serpent that oh sorry i cannot eat that fruit since this fruit has been forbidden sorry they have been for forbidden by god from eating this fruit eve says no sorry i cannot eat that fruit because we are not allowed to eat it at this the tempter hypocritically poses as eve's friend and appears indignant that the lords of the earth are not allowed to taste this magnificent fruit it is such a wonderful fruit and you are lords of the universe but lords of the earth but you are not allowed to eat this fruit satan poses as a friend and expresses surprise milton describes satan's eloquence at this man at this time and compares him to some famous orators in athens or rome it is again an epic simile satan's eloquence is also described satan addressed eve as queen of this universe etc and presented a series of arguments as to why they should eat the fruit that is the third temptation using reason temptation by reason o oh, sacred wise and wisdom giving plant he is addressing the plant the forbidden tree but it also looks like he's addressing eve o oh, sacred wise and wisdom giving plant mother of science now i feel thy power within me clear not only to discern things in their causes he is saying that eating the fruit has satan is saying that eating the fruit has given him the power not only to discern things in their causes but to trace the ways of highest agents deemed however wise even the highest agents of the universe like angels etc he is able to understand and discern he is able to do much higher things and understand much higher things he is able to great, gain great knowledge because of this fruit that he has eaten then he is addressing eve queen of this universe do not believe those rigid threats of death god has threatened you with death do not believe those rigid threats of death ye shall not die how should ye by the fruit how will you die with the fruit by eating a fruit do you think you will die you queen of the universe you think you will die by eating a fruit it gives you life to knowledge actually what you're going to get is life of knowledge life and knowledge by the threatener look on me he is swearing by god by the threatener look on me look at me by god look at me me who have touched and tasted yet yet both live i have touched the fruit i have tasted the fruit yet i live i did not die and life more perfect have attained than fate meant me 
I have attained a better life. than i was meant for than i deserved than fate meant me i have attained a better life by venturing higher than my lot i attempted to do things higher than what animals like me are supposed to do and because i did that i have raised i have been raised higher than my lot you queen of universe if you eat the fruit you will also raise higher than man and you will become god that is what he is trying to tell eve shall that be shut to man which to the beast is open i am a beast and this fruit is open to me shall the fruit be shut to man when it is open to a beast like me or will god incense his ire for such a petty trespass this is such a petty such a small mistake if you eat the fruit somebody has asked you not to eat a fruit and you are eating that fruit that is such a small mistake will god punish you with his anger for this small mistake and not praise rather your dauntless virtue whom the pain of death denounced whatever thing death be he is saying won't god rather praise you for doing a thing like challenging death he has threatened you with death but without being afraid of death you eat that fruit doesn't it look like god will praise you more for your courage for denouncing death whatever thing that death be deterred not from achieving what might lead to happier life knowledge of good and evil don't you think god will only praise you because you are never you have you are not deterred from achieving what is good what is a happier life without being deterred from a happier life you ate the fruit and got a happier life you got the knowledge of good and evil isn't that good of good how just if you are getting a knowledge of good how can it be just that god will punish you of good if you are getting a knowledge how will it be just that he will punish you and if the knowledge is of evil then also it is good because if what is evil be real why not known since easier shunned if by eating the fruit you get a knowledge of good then why should he punish you if you get a knowledge of evil then isn't it good that you know evil so that you can shun it you can avoid it unless you know evil how will you avoid it god therefore cannot hurt he either way god will not punish you for eating and getting knowledge of good or knowledge of evil for either way god will not hurt you and be just if he hurts you then god will not be just if he hurts you for this then god will not remain just he cannot be called just not just not god and if he is not just he is not god for this mistake he cannot hurt you if he hurts you he is not just and if if he is not just he is not god and if if he is not god not feared then not obeyed if he is no longer god he will not be feared or obeyed <laughs> so satan is proving that your fear itself of death removes the fear so you are afraid that you will die by eating the fruit if you eat the fruit you will get knowledge of good or evil god cannot punish you but with death for either of these because if he punishes you he will not be just if he is not just he is not god if he is not god why should you be scared of him so your fear of death itself removes the fear he is proving it in a syllogistic argument satan is proving it like a mathematical um theorem that is proved he is proving it why then was this forbid what was the reason for this forbidding you from eating the fruit he is analyzing god's purpose in forbidding eve and adam from eating the fruit why but to all but to keep ye low and ignorant god wants you to be full of awe for him he wants you to be beneath him you he wants you to be low and ignorant he wants you to be his worshipers he knows that in the day he eat thereof 
He knows that the day you eat that fruit, the day you eat from there, your eyes that seem so clear now, yet are but dim, shall perfectly be then opened and cleared. Now your eyes seem clear, but they are not clear. God knows that the day you eat the fruit, your eyes that are now seemingly clear but dim will really open and become clear and ye shall be as gods. God knows that the day you eat the fruit, you will be gods, knowing both good and evil as they know. Like the gods, you will also start knowing good and evil, that ye should be as gods, since I as man, internal man, is but proportion meat. Isn't it the right proportion? Isn't it right that when I, a serpent, has become internally man, you, man, should become God? Isn't it the right proportion? Isn't it the right uh, order or the right, um, you know, share that when I, a serpent, has become internally man, you should be like gods. I of brute human. I am a brute but human inside. I of brute human and ye of human gods. I am an animal human and you will be a human god. Isn't that appropriate? So ye shall die perhaps. So ye shall die perhaps. Perhaps you will die. But putting off human to put on God's death to be wished. But that death that you will have is the death of the human and the birth of the God in you. God was right probably you will die. But that death only means that the human will die and God will be born from you. Though threatened which no worse than, than this can bring. Then always means than. Though threatened, even though God threatened you with death, understand one thing. Death or whatever happens cannot be worse than what you are in now. Away from the universe, away from the rest of the universe, only beasts are there to look upon you. You are, you are the queen of the universe, but you are living in oblivion here. What can be worse than this? Nothing will be worse than this. Eat the fruit. Nothing will be worse than this, he says. What powerful rhetoric. What powerful words. What a powerful argument. Oh my God. You feel like bowing in respect before Satan's speech. For this powerful rhetoric. And Satan says, And what are gods that man may not become as they participating in godlike food? And what are these gods that by eating some fruit, man cannot become them? You see, if you eat this fruit, you will become gods. If you can eat a fruit and become god, then are gods so great? What are these gods? The gods are first and that advantage use on our belief. You should understand that gods were created first. And that they are using to their advantage. They are misleading us into thinking that we should be afraid of them. We should be beneath them just because they were made before us. That all from them proceeds. They are making us believe that everything proceeds from them. Well, I question it. I don't believe it. I question it. For this fair earth I see, warmed by the sun, producing every kind, them nothing. It is this earth that produces every kind of animals. It is this earth that is warmed by the sun. It is this earth that is like heaven. Gods that are in heaven, I don't see them producing anything, them nothing. If they all things who enclosed knowledge of good and evil in this tree, if it is gods who made everything and enclosed the knowledge of good and evil in this tree, that who so eats thereof forthwith attains wisdom without their leaf. If it is gods who made everything and if it is they who, you know, enclosed the knowledge of good and evil within this tree, then how can it be that whoever comes and eats these fruits will get 
wisdom without their permission what kind of arrangement is that if god made this tree and if god invested good and evil knowledge of good and evil into this fruit then how come anybody like me can come and eat this fruit and get wisdom what absurdity is it and wherein lies the offense so where is the mistake where is the offense that man should thus attain to know let tell me what exactly is this mistake that man sh should thus attain to know he says there is no mistake in eating this fruit what can your knowledge hurt him if you eat this fruit and get wisdom how can that wisdom or knowledge hurt god or how can this tree impart against his will if all be his if god made everything if this tree is god's if you are god's creation then how can you are eating a fruit from this tree be an offense against god how can this eating of a fruit hurt god if everything belongs to god and then satan says or is it envy or are the gods envious of you is it envy and can envy dwell in heavenly breasts oh i don't believe it if is it envy i don't see any other reason is it envy can there be envy in god's breast can there be envy in divine breast these these and many more causes import your need of this fair fruit these reasons all these reasons and there are many more reasons for you are eating this fruit you should eat this fruit all these create the consequence that you need this fruit god is humane reach then and freely taste human goddess reach out and freely taste this fruit thus satan ends his speech will god eat will eve eat this fruit or will she not eat it we don't know it will be continued in the next video until then goodbye ha 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 i hope you liked it bye bye